guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here and today we're taking a look at the Passmaster. What this device is, is a puck rebounding device that can be used on the ice, off the ice or on a shooting pad. We're going to be taking a look at the features that this thing has, some of the exercises that you can do with it and what kind of um, abilities or, or skills that you can develop while using this off the ice or on the ice. The design to this thing is very, very simple. It's a triangle made of reinforced metal. It's incredibly heavy, which prevents it from sliding around regardless of what material it's on, which is definitely a plus. If we turn it around the other side, you can see that it features these bungee cords that wrap all the way around the three legs, and also these little um, legs over here that help to help keep it standing up regardless of what material it's on. The way this um, bungee cord is, is designed, you can see that it's on all three sides, which means three players can use it at the same time. If you're using it on the ice, it has spikes that screw into these legs, they keep it fixed on the ice so it doesn't slide around, and if you're using it on a slippery surface like your shooting pads, it has rubber tacks that go on to keep it in the same position. We'll show you how to attach those momentarily. So as this is a puck rebounding device, the way it works is that you pass the puck to it and it sends the puck right back to you. The sort of things that you can work on are a variety of different passes, if they're hard or soft, uh, from short distances or long distances. You can also work on receiving a pass, being able to cradle the puck and use soft hands, which can be applied to every aspect of stick handling, which is definitely a plus. You can also work on your wrist shots and your slap shots or one-timers while the puck is in motion, which makes it much more game applicable as it, as it will be very rare in a game of hockey that you'll be able to take a shot or a slap shot with the puck stationary. So being able to practice slap shots with the puck moving is definitely a plus. So what we're going to take a look at now are the attachments that you can add to the legs of the Passmaster if you're going to be using it on ice or if you're going to be using it on a slippery surface, so the rubber tacks that go on the base of it. We're also going to set this up and take a couple passes with it from different kinds of distances to show you what you can do with it. So over here, these are the screws or the nails that dig into the bottom of the Passmaster if you're going to be using it on the ice and they give you this tool to be able to screw them in. So the way that works is simply like that. Put that in there and once it's on you just simply screw it into position keep going until that's nice and secure and that will dig into the ice so this pass master doesn't slide around on the ice. If you're going to be using it on slippery surfaces they give you six of these sort of tacks, these grippy tacks over here made of sort of a rubbery silicone material. Simply just peel one of those off, peel one of those off and just stick it over the top. And that helps to keep the pass master in place so it doesn't slide around if it's on a slippery material because that's very very um, grippy material that they've placed at the bottom of that right there. So let's go lie this on the um, ground. We're also going to use this on the ground and on the shooting pads and see exactly how it performs. So if you're going to be using the Passmaster off of the ice and off of the shooting pads on a similar surface that we're on right now, asphalt or cement or something like that, I definitely recommend going for a green biscuit puck as they slide very well on a number of rough and smooth surfaces. You can also use street pucks or the fly pucks, but I definitely recommend the green biscuit. If you want to see a review of this or more information about this or where to get it, there'll be a link in the video description. But let's see how this holds up on this surface with the green biscuit. So after having used the Passmaster on several different surfaces, we've used it on this AstroTurf surface that you can see behind us, which is like the sort of material that you find on a road or in a car park. We've also used it on the shooting pad that you can see. We've got the dry land tiles in front of me that we've been using it on. I can say that this is one of my favourite park rebounding devices for the simple fact that you can use it, through, three players can use it at the exact same time to develop their hand-eye coordination, soft hands when receiving passes, and also their accuracy when passing short distances and also long distances. One of the things that I really like about it is the weight and the design of it, which means that you can use it on the pads or on the ground without having to attach a counterweight to it or to put something on top of it to stop it from moving around. If it has, if you stick on these rubber tacks like we showed you earlier on, it stops it from moving around on the shooting pads and also on the road, which we definitely really, really like about it. 
One thing I definitely really like is the thickness of the bungee cord or rubber band that comes with this. It covers the entire height of the puck, so the pucks don't get stuck underneath it, go on top of it, like you might experience with bungee cords or other puck rebounding devices. They've really thought out a lot when they've put this into development, which I really, really like. And the fact that all you need to do is attach those spikes that we showed you earlier on to take it onto the ice is a big plus. We've tested a lot of um, different puck rebounding devices on the ice and we found that not very many of them are effective because they have to have counterweights or weights put on top of them to stop them from sliding around. But this simply requires some spikes and it works just as well as you saw on the asphalt as it would on the ice. So this is a definite plus. We said that the main things that you can work on with this are your passes, short hand passes, backhand passes, from close or from far, soft or even hard and very fast. We also like the fact that you can work on your one-timers and your wrist shots with the puck moving around, which makes your training much more game applicable. So this is definitely a must-have along with these dryland tiles. If you want to find out where you can pick this up, there'll be a link in the video description to hockeytrainingaid.com, which is a UK and European site where you can pick up all of these training aids. And there's also going to be much more information and more images in a full article on hockeytutorial.com where you can get more info about this. That'll be all in the link below. Important points to keep in mind before we head off. I'd say that if you're going to be using this on asphalt, you can see that I was using a Reebok 3K wooden hockey stick, which is fairly inexpensive. So if the bottom of the, the um, blade of the stick gets worn away, it's not that big of a deal because the stick only cost me about £19. But if you're going to be using your carbon sticks or you know your two-piece sticks, I definitely recommend using them on the dryland tiles or the hockey shooting pads so you don't destroy your stick. So that's definitely important. So keep that in mind. And if you want any more information about any of the other products featured in this review, like the dryland tiles, there'll be a link in the video description to see a review or if you'd like to go pick them up. This is Chris from Hockey Tutorial. Take care till next time.